Well, welcome back to Friday Night Lights, everyone. Actually, this isn't Friday Night Lights, but it sure does <laughs> seem so with our guest, Brad Leland. Brad, the first thing we're going to ask you to do is autograph this football. Anybody who comes on this show, oh, thank we, you. Get them, we get them, we get an autograph, and I'll tell you what, we'd certainly appreciate that. Sure. And we certainly would like to congratulate you on an incredible career. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time that we've been doing it. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Brad Leland, um, we're lucky to have him with us tonight. And I want to ask him something that may be a, a little bit tad embarrassing, but it is on his website, so you can <laughs> see it. But Brad, while you're signing that, let's talk about DOT. Well, Whoa! Tell the audience about <laughs> DOT. <laughs> you know what? This guy did his research. Um, I don't know if I can tell you. I think it's something you have to see for yourself. You won't believe it. Just go to bradleland.com and you'll see Dot, unfortunately. I don't. I shouldn't say that, but yes, you can find Dot at bradleland.com. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to go into the whole story, but it's Thomas Hayden Church's fault. He directed the movie and he cast me, and I don't know what, I don't know what else I can tell you. But she's near Amarillo. And, Dot uh, is near Amarillo. Near, yeah, and it's probably, I, I would have to say, maybe, maybe one of the more unattractive women <laughs> that, that ever walked on the face of the planet. There's, and, and I asked him why he cast me in that role, and he said, uh, I wanted people to be, what was his word, um, annoyed, and I wanted something very abrupt. And you'll see it if you go to that website. So Brad, would you, would you give any young aspiring actors any advice about playing abrupt, annoying, and probably not very attractive woman <laughs> named Dot? <laughs> yeah, get the money. Make sure you get the money. <laughs> so you heard it they, here they do, straight from Brad. Yeah, that's a good thing. Get paid first before you play the obnoxious yeah, yeah. Dot on the Now, tell us just real briefly, though, there was a scene where you kind of got to play two roles, but they kind of cut it on the floor. Is that right? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, it was Dot and her twin brother, the highway patrolman down the road. It was a road trip of young men who were on their way. Oh, that's a long story, but uh, <laughs> anyway, you never know what they're gonna what they're gonna edit. You know, when we were shooting Friday Night Lights, there were always three cameras, which is highly unusual. You know, it's not the master, the two shot, and then the close up. There were always three cameras shooting. We shot on film, and we would do three or four takes. And by then, they had that many for the editors to choose from. So the editors had a nightmare every day trying to to build <laughs> scenes out of. A massive amount of material that was sent to them. So wow. Yeah. Well, Kevin, let's break into the college pick 'em. You know, Coach Brent wanted us to do this, and so I've picked five, I think, crazy games. Now you're the expert. You're the Southeast Conference guy. You've been in sports desk forever. Tell us, what do you think? Tell us about it. Well, which game you want to know about, Judge? You want me to pick all five? Well, let's pick all to, five of them. Uh, just uh, shout them out and give me. All one right, moment. Kevin. I picked it because it's the Big Twelve, so far, anyways. Oklahoma State ranked number nine versus Arizona. I think OSU has too much firepower to go down there. And I'm not talking about Boone Pickens money. I'm talking about too much <laughs> speed on the field to, uh, for Arizona to contend with. Probably going to be a little bit tough going into Tucson, but I think OSU can handle it. Brad, what do you think? Oklahoma State University? Oh, I'm going to be a homer. I go OS, I, the Cowboys, you know, and as long as they're not playing tech, I'll, I'll go for OSU. Yeah. Kevin, our next game on the plate tonight, number three, Alabama. I picked this one on purpose, thinking of you. Number three, Alabama at, at Happy Valley. Number 23, Penn State. I have never picked against Alabama in just about the entire time I've been covering. Actually, in the entire time Gene Stallings was coaching there, I've never picked against Alabama. Uh, I've never picked against them when Saban has been coaching. If Penn State beats them, which I don't think they're going to be able to do, if Penn State beats them, they're going to have beaten a heck of a football team, but I think uh, Alabama's going to handle them and relatively easy. Now, by relatively easy, not like they handled Michigan State in the bowl game, but I think uh, they're going to win by 10, 12 points. Brad, Penn State. Oh, no way. I'd never go with the Nittany Lions against <laughs> the Crimson Tide. One of the few mascots without the letter S at the end of its mascot. You know that one? That, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. There's only 13 teams in Division One sports whose, le whose mascot does not end with the letter S. And, uh, and Alabama Crimson is one Tide of is one of them. I'll be darned. Okay. You know, you know another thing, too, though, Judge, i got to say this. Uh, Joe Paterno does have my all-time favorite comment in sports, and that was, if you remember the big shootout here in Texas when Texas beat Arkansas, Richard Nixon came into the locker room and he proclaimed Texas as the number one team in the land. 
Well, Penn State was also undefeated that year, and uh, Paterno made a pretty good living at after dinner talks later, saying, I just don't know how that guy could know so much about college football in 69 and so little about Watergate in 71. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Watergate, could this be the surprise pick of our five that I've chosen this week? Number 12, South Carolina has got to travel to Georgia. Could Georgia upset the Gamecocks? Could they? They could, but then up could be down, too. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. South Carolina is going to beat uh, Georgia. And i got to go with Georgia because my buddy coach on the show, Kyle Chandler, was a Georgia guy, and uh, I'm going with him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. We finally split our first game. All right, Brad Leland takes Georgia, Kevin Long taking <laughs> South Carolina. You know, of course, a local favorite, but got a little bit surprised this last week with a loss. Number 25, TCU, has to travel to Air Force. Air Force has been known to have a tough, tough home football team. Kevin, what do you think? Well, Arizona, <laughs> Air Force rather, I'm on the other game, Air <laughs> Force rather, you know, they've got that crazy flex bone that not too many people can play against. However, I think TCU is going to be ready. Now, TCU's primary problem against Baylor, they didn't get much of any help out of the corners. I mean, Baylor kept burning them right there. But that's not one of Air Force's real specialties. And so I kind of like the Horned Frogs, even though going into Colorado Springs is going to be tough. I'm going with the Horned Frogs. All right. Brad? Frogs. 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 Not even a question. <laughs> not a question. True to Texas. All right. Oh, yeah. Brad, I'm going to start with you on this one because you've been down in Austin so much. I have. I'm going to see if they've converted you. I have, I'm not converted, but i got orange all over me. <laughs> Number yeah. 24, Texas, is welcoming Brigham Young down to Austin, Texas. Ooh. Is Texas really worthy of the number 24 ranking or was Rice soft and is Brigham Young ready for the upset? They've kept everything a secret down there, haven't they? they we have. don't know much about the Longhorns this year for the first time in a long time. And I think the surprises will happen and uh, I gotta go Horns. Go, okay, you heard, go Horns. Kevin yeah. Long. We're gonna split it again here. Oh, all right. <laughs> like First time I was at a BYU-Texas game in Austin uh, Miss America that year was doing the sideline interviews for BYU. She was a student at BYU, and she happened to be Miss America that year. And uh, she must have made a great impression because I can't even remember her name. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, that was kind of a good experience. But I just, uh, I just don't think Texas is overpowering, and I think BYU is good enough to go into Austin and beat them. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, a, that's an interesting prediction. And if I had to pick an upset out of the five, I'm picking Brigham Young, even though – I bleed orange. I'm a Longhorn fan, Kevin. You know that. I wear the long orange shirt and the lanyard. And, but I, I think that if there's a pick on this five teams that we've I've chosen five games, Brigham Young could go into Texas. I don't, I don't think Rice test, tested Texas at all, and I think that number 24 ranking is not earned this year. And so I'm going to go, Brad, I'm sorry. It's okay. You're the guest. It's all right. Two to one. I'm going to take Brigham Young as well, I think. Oh, i got to throw this out there. I get to go to the game next week during the Emmys week. I get to be out there, and it'll be my first time in the Rose Bowl. So I get oh, to see wow. Texas play UCLA in the Rose Bowl a week from Saturday. How exciting yeah, is that? Yeah, that's going to be fun. You know, we may call you on your week. cell phone just to talk to you about Oh, I'm going to be down there. I'm the <laughs> Coach Brown lets me come down, so I want to hang on the sidelines. Not, not to mention, you know, Pasadena <laughs> is one of the neatest places to see a game. That's I what mean, they say. Well, why don't I put it this way? You really get that Hollywood feeling when you're up at a game in Pasadena. Everything from the scenery to the weather is awesome. Yeah. So you're going to have a good time there. All yeah. right, we've got 30 seconds. Let's go to the pros. Two games. Only thing that matters to us is what's inside the borders of Texas. The Dallas Cowboys have to travel to the New York Jets. Kevin? They don't get it done. Not New York City, they don't. <clears throat> Maybe down here they do. I'm going with the Jets up there. You have a score prediction. Uh, well, 31-24. Well, uh, so close game then. Close game. It's going to be close, but I just don't think Dallas can go in New York and beat Buddy Ryan or Buddy Ryan's kid. Yeah. And beat Rex. All right, Brad. I say low, low scoring game. I, I last year the Jets didn't let any points happen at home. Um, maybe the Cowboys will slip by and beat them fourteen to twelve. All right, fourteen to twelve, going with the home team. Oh, of course. All right, last team, <laughs> last game to put you guys on the spot with. The Houston Texans have to travel to Indianapolis. Brad, we'll start with you. Oh, did you hear what happened? Peyton ain't going to be around. Peyton Correct. may not be around. We just heard today that he may be out for the season with a neck injury. So, um, I that's a uh, I got to say the Colts rally, especially if he's hurt. 
So you're going to take the Colts then? Yep. All right, Kevin. We're on the same page here. I'm going with the Colts too. Well, I'm going to have to go ahead and be a naysayer on that. I'm going to take the Texans. I think that their running back is going to come back strong. He's going to start. I think he's going to have 205 yards against a run defense that's not proven. They've had to replace some folks on the uh, front line. I'm going to go with the uh, Houston Texans. Kevin, I'm going to kick it back to you to okay. close us up. All right, I'll tell you what, that's our show for this evening. Now, once again, we cannot express our thanks to you. Uh, I'm telling you what, uh, you know, we don't get too many Hollywood A-list actors going oh. on. But, uh, but uh, you know, Brad Leland from Friday Night Lights did take the time to join us. Probably didn't get enough talking about his days at Plano, but we did get enough. I mean, when you're talking about you did get the opportunity for uh, Tommy Kimbrough was your position coach, John Clark was your head coach. You played for two legends there. I did. A couple of stadiums right here in Plano named after those guys. Sure it was, was a great time then, and it's a great time now. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks thank for you having me, John. You bet. Okay. Thank All right. Thank you for taking the time nice to join us. Okay. Thank you. That'll be our show for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody have a good evening.